Got another question for the transition elements topic. So this one covers the properties of transition elements, empirical formula, ligands and complex ions, and stereoisomerism. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So we'll begin by saying why scandium and zinc are classed as D block elements. So that's because the highest energy electron is in a D subshell. And there's the full electron configuration for both of them. So why are neither of them classed as transition elements? So that's because neither of them form an ion with an incomplete D subshell. So to be classed as a transition element, it's got to be able to form an ion with an incomplete D subshell. Well, scandium only forms a 3 plus ion, so it's got that electron configuration, so it doesn't even have any D electrons. Zn only forms a Zn2 plus ion, and that's got a complete D subshell. Moving on to part B, so what's meant by a bidentate ligand? That's a ligand that's able to form two coordinate bonds, or you could say two dative covalent bonds there, to a central metal ion by donating two electron pairs. So we're moving on to the next part, we've got to identify A and B. First thing I've done is worked out the empirical formula for the complex. So that's just dividing by the MR of the atoms. We get the moles, divide by the smallest, which is obviously that one. We get this ratio here, but because we've got this 1.5, we need to double out so it's a 2 to 24 to 24 to 3 ratio. So the empirical formula, Cr2, H24, O24, S3. So we'll just work out the MR of that, which comes out at 608.3, which is the MR quoted in the um, question. So we don't need to multiply this out. That's also the formula for the complex. So looking at the non-metal atoms that we've got in the compound, H, O and S, it's likely this is going to be a hydrated chromium-3 sulfate because of the presence of S and O. And then if we look at the hydrogen count, we've got 24 hydrogens, so the X must be 12. So moving on to the next part, the production of B. You can see I've already written up the equation there. So we were told that once compound A was in water, we've got this hexa-aqua-3 ion present. So that's what's actually reacting with the ethane dioate ions. Why do we have two? Because we're told that complex B, six coordinate, contains two ethane dioate ligands and two water ligands. So obviously if it started with six waters, four have been substituted. The charge of B, I'll just quickly explain that. So chromium's plus three, obviously H2O is neutral. Each of the ethane dioate ligands are two minus. So you've got plus 3 with effectively 4 minus, so you're left with that 1 minus charge. So all we need to do now is draw these three stereoisomers. Remember we're told it's octahedral, so I've got my empty octahedra waiting to have the ligands put on. So the first one I'm going to draw is the transversion, where the H2O ligands are 180 degrees apart. So that means here we're going to have a bidentate ligand there, the ethane dioate ligand there, and there. So the next one I'm going to draw is the cis ligand. So we need the H2O's 90 degrees apart. So I'll put one there and one there. So why is there a third one? It's because the mirror image of the cis isomer is an optical isomer. So these are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. This one can't show optical isomerism because the mirror image of that would be directly superimposable onto the original one. So all we need to do now is mirror what's on here on this one. 